We would listen to a Dionne Warwick song and try to sing it exactly as Dionne did it. If you are a group, you would try to study the Supremes, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. If there was a group who com comes from abroad to our shores, we would want to go and see them because they have something to teach us. It, it all came from the American um, R&B music, you know, because we're always um, being influenced by the impressions, all them soul R&B groups. We start imitating the rhythm and blues songs, like say, Smiley Lewis or Professor Longhear, Louis Jordan, you know, those kind of beat. We try to imitate it. When we was playing the boogie boogie and the, the shuffle and things like that, we realized that we were definitely swatting or copying the American stuff. We did some rhythm and blues. We tried to copy the rhythm and blues with that driving beat. It was all about rhythm and blues. As the 1950s rolled on, the music of Fats Domino, Ray Charles and Louis Jordan was streaming into the island from Southern American radio stations just over 90 miles away. And with the sound systems blasting it out most nights of the week, downtown Kingston went dance crazy. Sound systems became the biggest local industry in downtown Kingston and competition was fierce. To pull in the punters, you had to have the best music blasting out of your system. The race was on for the hottest American tunes. He's the Ricky sensation. You know, American people, they need cheap labor, so they bring with cut them cane and things. But why are they cutting cane? If you buy rhythm and blues, six times more money you get because you're going to sell it back to sound system people. So everybody anxious to go to the farmer, but not for cut cane. They want to go buy some record. <laughs> you know? Out of this fierce competition, two giants emerged. Clement Coxon Dodd and Arthur Duke Reed. Combining their liquor businesses with their sound system dances, they were effectively the barons of downtown Kingston and would continue to control the Jamaican music business for the next 15 years. The reggae artist was rapping on that music back in the 70s and late 60s. The reggae artist was rapping on that music back in the 70s and late 60s. Coxon's sound system was a sort of sound system to create these jockeys that would use the microphone in between records. All the other DJs before our time, they would only just put on the records or either dance with a girl or drink a beer, but it wasn't anything exciting. Well, I'm Clement Dodd, better known as Sir Cox and Downbeat, master of the Royal Society of Jazz and the king of sound systems. And when you were growing up, that was their music in the house? Well, yes, we had a, a Martha Richards a radio, and we used to listen to the foreign station a lot, yeah. like Voice of America, listening to people like um, Billy Eckstein, and um, Cyril Vaughan, Lionel Lampton, Louis Jordan, you know. So, so where did you get the idea to go to America? Well, in the early days, it was a popular um, thing of the recruiting men for Florida, you know, to either work in fruit or vegetable or the sugar cane. Okay. So did you mix with the Americans at all, or...? Really, at work. Yeah, at work we mix with them. And uh, weekends, you know, when you go party, you mix a lot with the Americans. So would the parties be in town, or...? Yes, more... Yeah, you would say in, the, in town. It would be jukeboxes. When we go to like um, live shows, then it's quite different with the band. While I was there, I sent um, the amplifier uh, along with a lot of records and stuff like that. So you knew that was what you were going to do? 
Yes, and um, I send diagram of how like the box to be built. Then my old lady got involved, gave out the boxes, and she just started. She, as a matter of fact, she was the, the very first female DJ in Jamaica. I get ideas from some of the jukebox, you know, to build these box with a lot of glass and fancy stuff and writing on it. Was he speaking? On the no, record? the speaking um, wasn't really in the swing. I came back and, and changed that with a lot of toasting, you know. And did you get that idea from America? America, right. And then I got together with Count Machuki and, you know, would just toast to him like I've heard it on the radio station. This is the music I was listening to back in the days. Scare music before reggae come into his own. Scare music before reggae come into his own. When we was playing the boogie boogie and the, the shuffle and thing like that, we realized that we were definitely swatting or copying the American stuff. But after playing and experimenting along the way, we realized we could do something on our own. And then just for that difference, this is why we decided to really come up and stick to the scale. So you, you thought we want to make some in Jamaican? Some Jamaican sound, true Jamaican sound. We start imitating the rhythm and blues songs like say, Smiley Lewis or Professor Long here, uh, Louis Jordan, and, you know, those kind of beat. We tried to imitate it. It didn't turn out that way. So we decided to keep this as our own type. That's how that can come in. Styling like those was really rhythm and blues. What we did to this rhythm and blues is like you'll be doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But the, the, the scanner we change it to one, two, three. And then it's more two, four, two, four, instead of one. This is Jamaica's first musical revolution. And we call it Skia. <laughs> 